Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, I've got a very special guest. She just became the number seven performer all time in the 50 short course meter freestyle. She's a member of the New York Breakers this year in season two of the ISL. Uh, she was an All American at USC. She's now training at UNLV. Uh, Kasha Wasik. Kasha, how's it going? Hi. It's all good. I'm in my room in Budapest. Uh, just getting ready to race in two days. Yeah, it's a, dude, I, I it uh, it's baffling me how quick these matches are coming up for y'all. Um, let's yeah. let's start with that. How you you guys have had two matches so far? How have you handled just that that first initial back to back racing? I mean, we got eight days in between, so that was pretty long time. Um, so the challenge was to uh, basically. Um, get the good training in between because it's you know eight days so uh, my challenge was to just keep going after the first match and make sure i stay sharp in the weight room and in the pool and now in two days we race again and we um gonna cut the, the days in half so we're gonna have four days right now we have four days off and then we're gonna have two days off which for <laughs> me it's uh I think more fun because it's just, I love racing. I um, don't like, you know, sitting around and just waiting for it, especially now after like the huge, you know, time off from racing. Like I'm just so excited to be back in the pool and race and race and race again. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that seems really exciting. I'm sure it for someone, especially for someone who likes racing, um, you know, this seems like the perfect format. Um, tell, let's t- take us through, um, that second match, especially, cause obviously, um, y- you swam a really, really good 50 free and, and the breakers made an interesting choice as well, leaving you off the relay, um, to stay fresh. I'm, I'm guessing for that 50 free talk about that strategy and, and how you f- were feeling heading into that 50. Yeah, so uh, the first match I was uh, only the relay swimmer. And to be honest, like coaches didn't know how I'm going to perform. Um, so they only had times on paper. So they had to compare all the times. And of course, the other girls were uh, faster. I mean, Janet times are, she's, you know, a star and she's a great athlete. So um, I had a chance to race on the relay and um kind of you know um make myself up uh, so the second match uh we took a different strategy i mean the coaches did and they said listen uh um if you're confident like because i was so confident like i was like hey, you let me raise i just need a chance like i'm gonna show you I'm, you know i'm gonna be fast i, I can win i was I really believe in my training and, you know, all the work I put in during the crazy time pandemic and, uh, and leading to ISL. So I just, I just knew that I'm going to be fast. So I was just waiting for a chance to, to race. And um, yeah, they decided to take me out the relay and uh, focus on that 50 so I can get more points for the team. And uh, yeah, it was a good choice. Did, did you think you had that kind of a 50 in you? I didn't focus on time, but like I said, I was really confident in the work I put in uh, leading up to the meet. Um, so even a week before I said, I was uh, suiting up in the practice and going insane times that would be like top three in ISL. And so it just, me and my coach knew I'm going to be fast. And then when I got a chance, I just um, focused on swimming, um, having a good race. Uh, And then when I touched the wall, I was, I mean, of course, I was like, whoa, like I almost improved by half of the second. 
so that was obviously huge but um I felt good and you know it's it's funny like I look I watched the race after and uh it wasn't a perfect race you know <laughs> so it, it makes me so excited for for another you know another meet and for the future to 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 improve the details and maybe improve the time too yeah I mean that 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 is super <laughs> exciting and it's really cool that you guys still have at least two more matches hopefully uh, three hopefully three hopefully yeah. four but hopefully four <laughs> yes exactly um but th- that is super exciting and I'm you know I'm looking forward to watching uh all the all the upcoming matches I want to get you know, I want to give some context to, to that swim and to your, to where you're at right now as a swimmer. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm going to take it back and we're going to kind of move forward from there. Uh, you represented Poland at the 2008 and 12 Olympics, uh, in 2008, you were, and we're, the, we're, we're the same age. So yeah, you were 16. Um, yeah, I was 16. What was it? I, I, yeah, it was 2008. 2012 and 2016 <laughs> okay so you're a three-time olympian you've got you've got serious uh <laughs> rings under your belt you, you went to your first olympics at 16 what yeah. can you tell me about that experience and i, I mean was that eye-opening <laughs> definitely i mean it was crazy time because i remember <laughs> i wasn't a good swimmer from the start um <laughs> when i was uh you know even when I was 14, I was still like struggling to make B finals at the Polish nationals. I was really um, training hard, but I had to wait for for uh, the times to drop. And it was painful to see my friends, you know, winning the meets. And I was hoping to get into A final, you know, from going from B to A and just shaving my times. But when I, right, um, it was 2008 like I started improving so much and I remember we had the junior Europeans then uh, junior world champs and then Olympic games and at the junior Europeans I swam um, 200 freestyle and I shaved like three seconds of my best time so um, I qualified basically uh, the junior Europeans to for that Olympics um, for 200 freestyle for the relay. So it was just like crazy. Like I was going from the meet to meet, and then I got to go to the Olympics, and Beijing was just crazy. Like they they put at the show definitely. Um, so it's you know really cool to get to know all the um, older swimmers from Polish national team. Uh, I of course was a baby, so everyone's everyone's like, "What are you doing here?" But <laughs> everyone's also really nice, and they took care of me and uh, prepared me to stay with them for a longer time. Yeah, and and so and you did stay with them for for a long time. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously four years is a long time, but can, you know, from, from eight to 12, how did you see yourself progress, um, as an athlete? Uh, so yeah, that was like from 2008, I, I started progressing, uh, basically from a year after year and I faced really a hard time, like a year before the Olympics, before 2012, because I graduated high school and, I didn't know if, if I'm ready to go to the US. I, I had, you know, I was thinking already. Uh, I knew I want to study in the US, but um, it was a, such a big decision to, you know, switch everything that I know of a, a year before the Olympics. So uh, my brother, um, who is six years older than me, and uh, he used to be amazing swimmer. He He's a... a Polish um, champion in 50 freestyle short course as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, grants in the family. <laughs> um, so he, um, 
I decided I'm going to stay with him and he started coaching me. Um, so that was a really cool experience. Um, and we connected like right away. Like uh, it just, it was so funny because we spent so much time together and then, you know, we have to like, we had to figure out how to, um, you know, like basically like, um, be a little bit different in the practice like sometimes he would have to yell at me and I would have to accept that you know like Mm -hmm. or like you know like yell in the good way and I would have to be like okay you're my coach not my brother right now uh so that was really cool and uh, I made a 2012 olympic uh olympics training under uh my brother Robert um and yeah then I decided that I'm going to uh, go to the U.S. and uh, keep swimming and studying um, there. That, so, I, I mean, we've heard of, um, obviously, you know, husbands and wives training together. I feel like we've heard of, uh, like, the parent-child relationship. I don't know yeah. if I've ever heard of one sibling training the other. That sounds so cool yeah, that's, um that was a as- good experience and you know it, he's it's at that time i didn't even realize it's only six years between us it's you know it's not like a huge gap um so i just i really enjoy you know talking about this experience and we're still really close he's still you know calling me all the time at my about my swims and helping me with my technique um and it's like a nine hour difference between the you know vegas and poland and he calls me all the time at night (laughs) (laughs) and he's really like the biggest support i have i mean yeah what um if you can put put a point on it you know what what was the difference there for you between maybe just another coach or the coach you'd had before or coaches you'd had before um, and, and someone who, you know, like your brother, who obviously knows you on, on another level. Well, I trusted him a hundred percent. I knew he's uh, committed and he wants me to succeed. It's not like other coaches didn't want me to succeed, but it was one-on-one coaching. Um, so he was basically, that was his job. And uh, he was really involved. I could see his emotion every day going back to home and he would sit in front of the computer and al- analyze my technique. And then talking to my dad about my technique and I would be like, he's really into it. Like I wanna, I cannot disappoint him, you know. Like I don't wanna disappoint my brother, and uh, so that was, yeah. Like it was just interesting to be to spend with uh, someone like so much time, um, and yeah, like I mean, we connected really well, and like I said, from moment one, like from from. Basically, from that time to right now, he's helping me um, in my swimming career. That's that, that's super cool to have a sibling uh, connection like that, and certainly to to have to get to have your sibling as a coach. That sounds awesome, especially yeah, it's, training for the Olympic Games. You know, yeah, it's it's funny. Um, I have two brothers and a sister, and uh, my last uh, my maiden name. Uh, it's Wilk in uh, and it, it, it means wolf in uh, Polish. So every time we would show show up to the pool, everyone would be like, "Oh, wolf gang, it's here!" <laughs> there was so many of us, and everyone would swim. Uh, and I mean, my sister was um, a track and field star, but my brothers would swim, and I would swim, and we would be a good swimmers. So it just it was a funny. Ex- Experience and it's definitely, I mean, it definitely helped me having my family around me all the time. <laughs> I bet. Dude, how could, how could that not help having a Wolfgang? <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, so you train with your brother um, for the 2012 Olympic Games. How did how did those games compare for you um, from 2008? Uh, it was. I mean, it was definitely a different experience because he was in Europe. Um, it was in London, so uh, uh, it was fun being so close to home and having like the same culture and. Um, at that point, I knew I'm going to go to the U.S. after. So just like being at the Olympics and meeting all the coaches from the USC and like the athletes, that was like really cool experience. And they were all cheering for me. Um, so it was just different, like being from going from 2008, I was really scared, you know, uh child like 16 year old and then four years later i was a completely different athlete so definitely that was a big difference i mean that certainly makes sense yeah you've you've had some time to mature and age and obviously get you got an international medal under your belt between 2008 and 2012 you got bronze the four by 50 medley relay at the European short course championships. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so you, you can, that, the that built the confidence. Definitely. Oh, I'm sure. What <laughs> like, built the you, confidence? Yeah. Did you do some freestyle on that one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, you grow a lot between 2008, 2012, and then you head to us to university of Southern California in Los Angeles. Um, and you swim there for four seasons. Is that right? Yeah, four years. Uh, yeah, I got right after the <laughs> Olympics. I didn't even, uh, I couldn't even take a uh, few weeks off because I had to uh, be on time um, to school. And it was a shocker, really, like for me being so close to my family uh, and leaving my friends and family and going to a completely different culture. Um, that was really tough. And my freshman year wasn't so good. I mean, swimming wise, uh, I think, um, I mean, my times weren't there. Like it was just like, I wasn't ready for all the dual meets uh, we had um, swimming, like racing, in, you know, like, we were racing you know with our resting and in our normal training suits I was just like oh my god like I've never done it before so yeah like it's it's funny like I remember my first dual meet and I went so slow because I even like you know swimming yards like I never (laughs) swam yards before so I missed the wall (laughs) and it just my time was really bad and like one of the assistant coach was like oh my gosh she's on full right like, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame them at all you know so I you know I had to find a way to um, find myself on the team and uh, um, and work hard to improve because I knew everyone believes in me like I have you know I have to lead the team and we have to do good. So every every year, you know, like from my freshman year to my sophomore, junior and senior, like every year was better and better. And of course, my senior year was the best. <laughs> yeah. So um, how did you end up, you know, being able to find a way to improve, especially that freshman year, just like you said, finding your place in the team, um, finding ways to get better, you know, what, what were you able to do to, to push through that? Well, my biggest challenge was I was really shy. Like I was afraid to speak up. Um, I could understand English, but to say something (laughs) loud, like I was just like, no, I'm good. (laughs) You know, I had, I, you know, I, I didn't have any conflicts being in college because I was just like I I'm out you know like I don't want (laughs) to get into it so um I had I had to find a way to be to basically I found a group of friends that helped me open up and be more confident and then you know I I knew the team really supports me um 
and they want me to succeed and the coaches want me to succeed and they want me to help uh, to help me so it was just you know like it's just just feeling confident in that place like like realizing like hey this is gonna be my home for at least four years let's make it great and yeah like like I said the, you know in senior year I was uh it was like the best year ever we won pack 12s we brought the NCAA title I mean the in the relay um so yeah like I made the Olympic team that year as well, 2016, right after, you know, going like, going off right after NCAA. So just crazy year. Yeah, I mean, talk about what, obviously another four years full of progress um, and growth for you. Um, Like you said, being able to open up, finding a support system in this strange, you know, not homeland um and then and then your senior year you know yeah you're able to to lead the team to a pac-12 title uh you guys won the meet you won the foreigner free relay at the 2016 ncaa's um how i mean how cool was that to see all that hard work you had put in in those last four years really pay off in those ways yeah i mean it was amazing. Like, I just, I couldn't even dream of, you know, finishing, finishing my college career with such an accomplish, accomplishment. I mean, like going from the slowest team, the slowest <laughs> person <laughs> in my freshman year, uh, my senior year, I got uh, the most improved swimmer award. Uh, and it was really special for me, you know, like, um, I think other, you know, like it just showed also other athletes that sometimes you have to be patient and really work hard and kind of figure out your way to to go up and uh, don't give up. Um, so definitely that was cool experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Yeah. Uh, that seems that seems pretty cool, and then. Yeah. Um, I saw Dave, uh, Dave Cielo, like two days ago, and I was just so happy, you know, that he's here and, you know, having a coaches from uh, from USC and you know, it, it's just great. Like I, um, like I go back really often on that time in my life, and we just had so much fun, and you know, we can right now we can sit at the pool and talk about it. Uh, and so it seems like you've had a lot of phases in your swimming career so far, and uh, we're only like halfway through them, but it, <laughs> it seems like swimming has carried you a long way, which is super cool. Um, real quick, I want to, you know, you had that dream season, your senior year at USC, you make the Olympics, your third Olympic team, which is quite an accomplishment. Um how did you know take me through that olympic experience what what was different from rio than those first two i was definitely like i could feel like you know i have experience i wasn't you know like afraid and at that time i was really enjoying swimming i just had fun in the pool and uh i i you know um i just wanted like enjoy that experience and uh my uh uh at that time fiance now husband like came to tokyo to watch me swim and my brother came too so it was just so cool like i mean it was i remember like the rio was really tough because of the hours uh, of the races like it just it was really tough to adjust but it was really a great experience because I had my family there and also I knew so many people at the pool. I felt like home, you know, like just being in the U S um, gave me that chance to meet so many great athletes. Um, so that was, you know, that was really cool. Nice. Uh, 
And so, t- t- I mean, I this is where I I get fuzzy on my timeline. Um, I think you know, t- take me through these next few years because I'm pretty sure you retired at some point, um, and then you came back, obviously. Yeah. But um, you know, after after Rio, take me through your timeline. What what was what was, where were you mentally? So um, after Rio, I mean, like I said, I was so happy with swimming that. I didn't even think about retiring. Um, I uh, I remember showing <laughs> to a practice like um, at USC. That was like September, and I had a uh, meeting with Dave, and he asked me like, "What? So what do you plan now?" And I was like, "What do you mean? Like, let's go swim. <laughs> like, I I'm ready. I I want to keep swimming." And uh, I started, you know going back to swimming uh, for a few weeks and then I hit the shoulder injury. Uh, so that was a bummer. Um, definitely like that took me uh, off the path. And then um, I decided to move to Las Vegas uh, to be um, closer to my fiance at the time. <laughs> um, and we started planning a big wedding um, in Poland, and I got a uh, job in uh, in the office and as a clinical research assistant. So that was kind of my dream. Um, I always wanted, you know, uh, work in the office, experience that uh, something different than um, being an athlete, athlete uh, the whole life. So. Yeah, it's just my life took me to a different uh, path. And um, after a year, um, I started missing swimming so much. Like I could, I mean, I, I was watching swimming and following swimming all the time. And uh, I remember um, thinking like, oh man, like I could be there, but I'm here in the office. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like it was, I mean, it was a really cool job, but I just knew I had a chance, you know, and I'm sitting in front of the TV and like, I didn't want to watch the Olympics and, and thinking like I could be there, but I didn't even try, like, come on, like, that's not me. So um, they, we had them up. Uh, I mean, I, and also like the whole time I was over swimming, I was, really active like you know like I didn't change my lifestyle I would I would go I would wake up before uh before work and um go run or do you know like weight training or I just enjoy being active so um I had a good base and um all of a sudden like a year and a half after we had the masters we meet uh, at the UNLV. And a lot of my California friends came to that swim meet. And I got a lot of messages like, hey, are you gonna be there? Like, let's meet up. So I, I was like, ah, whatever, I'm gonna sign up for that meet. And um, I, didn't even, I didn't even tell my husband, I didn't even tell my family, no one. I just went to the swim meet and race 50 freestyle and 50 fly I think and I went like 23 low (laughs) you know short crazy yards but after the break and not training at all that was like really good time yeah and just the atmosphere at the pool was so good and and I realized I I want to try it again so the next morning, I uh, show up to a master uh, group, <laughs> Las Vegas Masters, and I started training with them uh, because I just knew I'm not in the shape to to even look for the professional team at that time. I, I was, you know, aware of where I am. Um, so, yeah, I started swimming with masters for two months, I believe. And then I connected with uh, UNLV head coach, uh, Ben, Ben Lors, and um, he invited me to join a pro group in at UNLV. And since then I'm, I'm training there and I really enjoy it. 
That's that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, I it, think yeah, I think I uh, came back to swimming 2018. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just yeah, it's crazy. Like um, ever since then, like I keep improving. I wasn't like at the beginning, you know, I was just let's see where it takes me. Like my goal was to make the Olympic team, um, and um, like a few months after, we decided I'm gonna go to Polish national just for fun, like not, you know, like thinking, oh, I'm, am I gonna win or what time I'm gonna uh, throw? Like, I just, I was just, ah, it's a chance to see my family. You know, I've been training for a couple of months. Like, let's see where I am. And I won, I actually, like I raced only 100 freestyle I, and I won and <laughs> I qualified for Europeans. Uh, so it just, we were all in like I was surprised and um that was like really cool experience and I knew I have a chance and you know and I have to work really hard and uh uh you know maybe evaluate my goals uh on the road <laughs> uh did you did you go to Europeans <laughs> I did. I and it's so fun. my coach went too. I remember him. <laughs> and um I raced so many hundreds freestyles. I like I don't even know how I was still alive the last day. I had I still race every relay, um like prelims and finals. And you know, it was the uh, freestyle relay, medley relay, mixed relays, and, and then 100 freestyle <laughs> on my own. And it's funny, I didn't race 50 freestyle at that time. I was just, 50 freestyle wasn't even on my plate at that time. I was always a 100 freestyler. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I focused on that and I did so good. I like jumped right back to my best times from before the retirement. Mm -hmm. so that was really cool to see like oh my god like the, like people couldn't believe like what did you do like did you really retire <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was just like it was a really like awesome to see where I am but also like after I came back to swimming every day I was excited I was like waking up to practice earlier before my alarm like, it's crazy I know but I was just so excited to have that chance like, to raise again and train again you know to have a coach again um that I would wake up before practice and uh and just being like so happy and you know couldn't wait to jump in the pool <laughs> says no swimmer ever but except for Kasha yeah, yeah. Wasik <laughs> I was surprised to believe me <laughs> <laughs> that, I you mean, just have to take a few years off and you were gonna see <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret to swimming just yeah. I mean and I think we've seen a lot of people do this right they they step away they have a break for a while and then they come back and they're like I really like doing this and and it's really yeah. cool to get to be able to do this um so you, you go to Europeans, you swim a bunch of hundreds, um, and then uh, you take me through your, so, so for, I guess, first of all, what, what was working for you about that UNLV pro group? So, I mean, I, I really connected with my coaches. Um, I, I have two coaches, so the head coach, Ben Norris, and assistant coach, uh, Patrick Ota, and um I really like, I don't know, but I know they like they trust me and I trust them and they never question me. I never question them, you know? It's uh, it's really great relationship and um, yeah, they, you know, they're always there for me and the training, it's um, a little bit different. Uh, we, we do like sprints, but also like aerobic work that, you know, no, no sprinter would do it. <laughs> so, and they're, you know, they work together, but they're both different. Uh, so, so I like that about them, but really it's, it's trust, you know, uh, uh, I really connected with them and they're great people. So is yeah. is there a, a uh, an actual pro group there like do you train with other 
yeah. pros? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have, uh, so it's a really small group, but if anyone want to join, <laughs> just message me <laughs> or my coach. I would love to have some <laughs> training partners. Um, but no, we had um, two guys training with me last year. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really great. And this year, I um, I have one guy and one new uh, girl. Uh, surprise! <laughs> um, so it's really a small group, but we uh, we're such a close friends. We support each other, and we know the, our goals. You know, we don't. We show up to practice, and we know we we're gonna give 100% and we're gonna support each other um we spend time you know not only in the pool like together but also outside the pool we you know like I said we're really close together um and I think that what makes it fun uh really like about this small but efficient pro group <laughs> yeah I mean that that makes a lot of sense. That's, it seems like it would be fun. Um, yeah. And so uh, then you go back to the 2019 short course European Championships. And uh, so you go back to the 2019 World Short Course Championships. Sorry, European Short Course Championships. And you win another medal in the medley re to uh, the 4x50 medley relay. This time it's gold. Uh, take me through that race and, and what that meet was like for you. That was, I mean, that was a great meet because um, I, I remember I, I raced also so much, like 50 freestyle, 100 freestyle, all the relays. And um, I improved like so much in every event. Um, so I knew I'm like in best shape in my life and that the relay was at the end. And we were all so tired because that was like, well, they, they ate or what? Like the Europeans yeah. are so long. Yeah. So it was my last race and um, like 10 minutes before the race or 15, I had 50 freestyle final. Um, so I didn't even have time to warm down or change the suit. And I remember I jumped into the warm down pool for 50 meters. And I was like, okay, this is the last race, you know, whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen, have fun with it. And I went to the uh, first call room and I saw all the girls there waiting for me. And yeah, we just, we just had fun. Like, we're like, yeah, this is the last race. It's, it's you know, let's, we didn't even think about metal. Like we just, uh, we're thinking about swimming our best. Um, so uh I yeah like I didn't even look like you know being on the last leg like you're you're able to see the times and where you are I didn't look up I was just like let's let's focus you know like <laughs> like I I have to do my job <laughs> the last leg <laughs> so um I, like I didn't know at that time we were a little bit behind uh I just jumped in and swam my heart for Poland and that the, you know the whole Polish team was so loud like it was crazy like you could hear only Poland <laughs> I felt like only Polish people were on the stands uh -huh. and when I touched the wall I um of course my vision is not so good so I didn't even know that we are first <laughs> like, <laughs> and all the girls were like somewhere like celebrating and I was just somewhere. like what happened yeah like, <laughs> what happened and then like I you know took off my goggles and um so we we're first and I was just in shock like this is that was the first time in Polish history that uh it was the first gold for Poland in the relay so it was pretty big deal really big deal and it really like um gave us a lot of energy to train hard and you know like um see where we can be the next year maybe like yeah like we would love to like you know win another title next year or in two years you know so it was really cool race 
no kidding. I mean, you you said I you know I didn't know where I was. I just jumped in and swam my best. And uh, I mean the the margin between you guys, you pull, team Poland in third place, which is Russia, was point one one. You you passed the silver medal team Italy and the bronze medal team Russia on your leg alone. So uh, that's that's pretty that's a pretty cool race. Well, like I said, I closed my eyes and <laughs> I just. I really want to, I mean, like, obviously, like, I want to do it for Poland. Uh, like, winning the first gold uh, for your country, it's just, I mean, like, it's crazy. Like, it's it's a great feeling. Uh, so, I just want to do my best and have, have no regrets. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, that, I mean, so last... The, I think the last little chunk of this story is obviously uh, the last six months, you know, what with, with the global pandemic, with quarantine, um, how has that affected your training? What does that look like for you these, these last few months? Yeah. yeah, it was, God, crazy. I mean, right before the pandemic, I went to Des Moines uh, to, to race. And, Same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I, I didn't think, you know, the season's gonna end like that. Uh, I was going again. I went my best time in the 50, and I get the FINA A card uh, for the Olympics. And in my mind, I'm already thinking about Olympics. You know, like, oh my God, I, you know, if I improve just like a little bit, like maybe I have a chance. You know, like, for, like it just. It was crazy because the week after I came back from the meet and they, you know, everything was closed. Uh, we didn't have a pool. Um, and I was freaking out. Like, I think the first two weeks, like, we didn't know if the Olympics gonna, you know, happen. Are they gonna postpone the Olympics? So it was just like a wait, you know, like, really strange wait. And, uh, but I, you know, I stayed active um, because in my head, like I was getting ready for the my best performance ever at the Olympics. And then um, they announced po- they're gonna postpone the Olympics. And obviously, like, I mean, honestly, I was really mad. I was, I wasn't happy, you know, like I had a goal in my head um, that I'm gonna race, you know, um, I was already qualified for the Olympics. So uh, all of a sudden, like everything that I was, you know, preparing, like I, it just, it stopped. Like I had to, you know, like event a little bit. I think I had a day that I was just like, ah, oh, like, <laughs> I have to stay off of all the social media and everything. Cause like, I'm really like not happy, but of course, you know, I I knew this is you know something bigger than swimming, um, and everyone is dealing with you know global pandemic. So it's something we have to accept. And honestly, like I I mean I I really think like that year, extra year um, it's helping me. It's in my advan- advantage. Like yes it's really bad and we don't want pandemic you know i wish that would never happen but if you know we got the extra year and let's make it great so i started training with that attitude and um after uh you know after a couple of weeks i managed to get a pool uh my awesome close friend uh, dr yelena kunovats uh, she um, let me use her backyard pool. Um, so, you know, that was, that was a huge step uh, being able to, you know, get into the, to, to the water and swim. And um, she's like crazy motivation to me too. Like she, she won the um, uh, master world championships in her age group. And she's so dedicated, like, <laughs> you wouldn't even believe like she's my inspiration 
Um, so it was, you know, like I really appreciate that she let me use that pool and uh, let me train in her backyard, even though it wasn't, you know, it wasn't perfect, but I could, you know, get into the pool and feel the water and do some, you know, technique or speed work. Um, so, yeah, um, I think I did good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it seems like the whatever work, <laughs> the work you did during the pandemic is is going all right now. Um, yeah. So, so, so to 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 wrap our conversation up, you I know, mean, had it. I have to I have to give like a huge credit to my coaches because they were so patient. They would like write me a workout that were feeding the pool that I'm swimming at and I would write it down on my paper and um you know like they were trusting me with the times and they knew like I'm not going to go as fast but they I always could count on them to have their workout you know and then when they reopened the pools uh, we rented a lane and they coached me every day they were always there for me um so it just we did like huge you know amount of work together and it paid off so yeah that's that's really cool and it's really cool to have a support system like that um, who, you know, you know, they're, they're in charge of a college team and, uh, you, you do not have to be their priority, but they took the time. Like you said, they were there every day, they rented a lane and and they made sure that, uh, that you were getting in the work you needed to get in. Yeah. It's, it's crazy because it's like, sometimes I feel like my coaches are not sleeping, you know, like (laughs) they're like working all the time and they both have kids and I, I like I feel like I'm adopted you know like <laughs> addition <laughs> they I really appreciate them like they put so much time and commit like they're, they're just 100% in and, and I never felt I'm left out even though I know they yeah they have the college team to run you know it's it it's really crazy and that, I mean, again, it's super cool that you were able to find something that, that fit well enough for you, where you live, <laughs> uh, with your, with your now husband and, and something that really works. Um, so Vegas so, is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. That's good. That's super cool. Like, and so who doesn't think like that, right? <laughs> uh, so, so to, to bring this full circle heading into your next couple matches um, in Budapest and ISL. What are you, what are you looking for? Um, what are these next couple weeks? What are you hoping to see out of yourself? Um, improve. <laughs> uh, getting points for my team. Uh, we, you know, we are, we working hard to make the semifinals. And I think this is going to be a big accomplishment. I think we showed we're, you know, this team is not the same um, as the last year. Um, I'm really proud of, you know, everyone on my team to s- stepping up and uh, throwing really good races. Um, so, yeah, I want to improve my times, work hard and just race, have fun, you know, like, and I believe, you know, in my work. So, um, I'm not focusing on, on the time. I just want to have the perfect race and be happy with it. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.